What it do, what it do. This is Glenn Andrews representing Heroes and Kings, as well as my partner Elijah Brady representing Heroes and Kings. He's out at Lifetime Fitness out in Johns Creek. Personal trainer, nutritionist, training clients out there. Uh, I run a facility over in Decatur. I'm a general manager, so I train trainers. Uh, do some fitness assessment with some of the folks that come through there, but I really set my trainers up to get with clients who want to lose weight, want to build muscle, want to, you know, take part in a Tough Mudder, Spartan, whatever folks need to do, we're there to try to help them do it. Uh, Heroes and Kings, it is our merchandise store. Uh, the store is actually kind of, I would say, horizontally connected with what we're trying to do. We're personal trainers, master trainers, uh, life coaches, health coaches by trade. Uh, we left other careers to pursue this. And, uh, you know, me and Elijah, both me from athletics, playing baseball, football, mountain biking, road biking, rollerblading, just basketball, tennis, softball, flag football, whatever the sport may be. Uh, I am an athlete and I, I train for athleticism. I've trained uh, military as well as law enforcement folks, uh, executives, as well as the, the, the little old lady who just want to lose weight. And uh, Elijah the same across the board. Uh, so we created Heroes and Kings, just, just the merchandise stuff, as well as we go out and speak, go out and talk to schools, churches, uh, youth programs, and just giving individuals uh, a chance to see two African American men with no motive uh, other than to see them be their best and whatever we have try to give those tools to them as well uh, today this Friday uh, has I have a whole bunch of thoughts on my mind but what I what I want to kind of convey today or just present today is you know the whole thing of what health and wellness and fitness and everything that's out there right now uh as i said as i, as I previously stated i'll be 57 this year elijah is in his mid-30s and he, he straight was going into bodybuilding me just just from training for football and baseball and i've been at this thing since uh jack lalane since i was eight years old my dad was in the military army always push-ups, bike riding, always had weights around the house. We, Me and my brother have always had weights and stuff around the house. My brother just posted up a picture today. He's 55, six-pack still kicking. Me, if I can go ahead and go through this cut, which I'm trying to debate on whether I should do it or not because I've always kind of just like pushing a lot of weight and, 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 and powerlifting and weightlifting, not so much for aesthetics, though I've always had a small waist and, and broad shoulders so I can carry that look, but I've never really cut down except for maybe one time. And I ain't like it to be straight up honest with you. I mean, I don't mind, I eat healthy. I'll say about 90, 10, 90%, 10%. Uh, eat, eat pretty clean every now and then. Me and the wife will go and enjoy ourselves. But uh, what a lot of folks don't realize, there are individuals who are naturally lean. You get into endomorph, mesomorph, ectomorph. You get individuals who are naturally lean who can carry a six pack because that's part of their genetics and DNA. Then you have others who, who can diet down and maintain maintain that. Uh, I may do it again before I turn 60 just to just to, just to do it and let folks, let particularly men my age, know that there's still uh, a way that you control your health, whether in your health controlling you. Uh, and, that, and that's really kind of the main the main focus is that you have control of your health rather than your health controlling you. Uh, you can't control the clock, but you can't slow the clock down. Um, but yesterday, had a had a had a young man coming to my facility. He signed up about two weeks ago with my assistant Cedric, and Cedric, certified trainer, young guy, knows his stuff. Got a lot of clients he's training. He gets five star reviews from all the individuals that he trained, which I watch him train and coach and, and take folks through their sessions. And he, he's just kinesiology, form, 
uh, what the client's goal is and just walking around, keeps, keeps notes on all his clients. He's just on point. And I was sitting there talking to, to my man. He has the same name as my nephew. And we were just sitting up there talking about uh, what he wanted to do. He 5'11", 142 pounds, and he wanted to get up to approximately 170, 180 pounds, which we're talking 35 to 40 pounds, and he's 22. So uh, we, what he want to do can be done, but what, what one of the, and I'll go back, I'll go to the end and I'll come back. The big thing was trying to tell him to get used to the training and get used to the journey first and then with kind of a backdrop of what you want to do with your body and dialing yourself in because in 2020 there's so much information out here there's information here on youtube there's what you can do on google there's a trainer everywhere a coach everywhere there's all types of uh training methodologies uh, training niches, spin studio, rowing, hot yoga, yoga, CrossFit, Orange Theory, boot camps, one-on-one -on -one training, bodybuilding, weightlifting, powerlifting, uh, functional training, hit Mike Mincer hit high intensity training, and then hit high intensity interval training. Then you get into the different diet stuff: dry fasting, intermittent fasting, paleo, keto, zone, vegetarian, vegan. Uh, carb cycling, water, water cycling, water fasting is just so much information out there. And the sad part of it is, or the good thing about it, there's access to information and everything works. Everything works. Uh, I've just about tried everything safe except uh, enhancements. And that's on the table. I'm getting older. And if I, f if I feel the need and if, it, if, if, if through a doctor and crossing a path that comes about, I would do it. Now, there's no need. And when I was younger, definitely was no need. But as I get older and, and, and every now and then make a move here, I'm going to move there and I feel the back and I feel the shoulders. Hey, who knows? But I've done CrossFit, weightlifting, powerlifting, uh, High interval training, hit. I've tried all the different bodybuilding, weightlifting methodologies, push, pull, split, and uh, different diet stuff. I've done vegan, vegetarian, paleo, zone, keto, all of it, and all of it works. And so when we have clients that come to us, at least we've had some experiences in those areas and try those things. So if that's something they want to do, we know a little bit about it. Um, that I was talking to my talking to the young man, and I was just giving him all this information about uh, calculating your macros, uh, down in your goal, knowing how many calories you're eating today, knowing how many calories you should be eating, and what you should do to your diet to put on weight, what you want to do to your diet and macros to lose weight to get cut. And as I was sitting there talking to him, giving him all this information, it dawned on me that here I am. <clears throat> Here I am at 56, getting ready to turn 57. I know all this stuff and have all these tools and training methodologies and nutritional methodologies and instructions that we can give all these different people and know everything work, but I think we're, we're kind of overcomplicating it. Matter of fact, I don't do I think, I know we're up overcomplicating it, overcomplicating it because me, Rand, David York, Vince Burton, Marcus Coney, Alan Clark, uh, Edgar Sharp, all the young guys that I grew up with and played football with and played baseball with, all of us lift, lift weights and worked out and trained. And we were able to get into fantastic shape at a, in our young age. And now as some of us are getting older, maintaining our health and maintaining you know, some wellness. Every now and then we'll steer left and get out of shape, but we have something that will pull us right back. And we had a foundation that was just built on simple weightlifting one-on-one, -on -one, simple every now and then going for a run, simply eating clean, eating good, eating healthy food, eating cooked food, and, and drinking water, and not drinking a lot of alcohol and drinking a lot of soda and a lot of junk. 
And this is this is just really health and wellness, weight training, exercise one on one. It's it's it, it really not it's really not rocket science. It's it's volume and training number one, uh, eating good and drinking water, but it's consistency, it's discipline, and I I dare say the biggest the biggest variable is intensity to to be in the gym or going working out every day and and going past where you're comfortable and most of the personal training governing bodies and they're fantastic ace nasm it's a uh i can't think of some of the other ones on, on top on on, on off the top of my head, even going getting undergraduate degrees in athletic training and kinesiology, what they teach you is to recognize a person's where they are, as far as their whole body balance, stability, core, strength, cardiovascular, anaerobic, aerobic, but also what their goal is. But there's like a governor, something that David Goggins talk about uh, in 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 where you need to go to be to be great to be better and we're almost taught to coach and teach people with with a safety net and a governor and most times some individuals 95 percent not say 90 percent of the individuals get right to their goal or close to it uh but then you have that that five percent or that two that that two percent that not only do they go past their goal, but they they just take on a whole new life, take on the lifestyle of health and wellness. So there's one thing to get folks to their goal. It's another another thing to not only coach and train someone, but then once you step back from it, they they've taken what you've taught them and turned it into their lifestyle. And when they train, they're not trying to work up to where they can stop. They're trying to surpass each day or each week or each month whatever their PRs are and and that's the difference because quite frankly most of the governing bodies and they have to do it the way you are taught to coach is to make sure you're not getting sued and you don't hurt somebody but you don't no one wants to injure someone or put someone in a situation where their form is terrible that they hurt themselves and secondly that and, and and you can you can check the Mike Rashids, uh, B B Beastmo Jones, Charlie Coker, C T Fletcher, my man Elijah here, David York, some of the folks we've trained the way we train ourselves, my buddies Vince, Mark, uh, to get to where we are physically, and to get to where we are mentally, and to carry and it carries over into our life outside of here we went up to that 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 we went to that line drawn in the sand that is discomfort that is pain uh <laughs> sometimes it's drawing blood uh i don't know if it's being a sadomasochist to block to block that to get past where you need to go but once you are training or training someone or you your own training in the way we do it there's no governor there's no wall there's no there's no there's nothing stopping us going past this point if if today i'm doing 100 push-ups tomorrow it's 110 it's 120 if i'll give you this example I was talking to the trainer, and I, and I was talking to one of the one of the ladies that come in my gym, and and she's that way because she used to be a runner, cross, long distance runner, played tennis, played soccer, and she just she she just goes in, and we were sitting up there talking about it, and you know there's been some times where I would just put over 500 pounds on a trap bar, close to 800 pounds, 900 pounds possibly on a trap bar. And clients or a couple of clients would come in, and I would just say, you know what? There's about six, seven hundred pounds, eight hundred pounds on that bar, and 
I would just say, hey, you know what? You ought to try, try, try to do it. Knowing that they cannot do it. I know they cannot do it. I just want to see what that initial thought is. Because that initial thought of, at the very least, let me try to do it. At the very least, it's possible that I can do it. But instead of telling myself, no, I can't do it, I'm going to say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to try. And, I, and, and something in the mind say, yeah, I can do this. Something in your mind say, I can do this. Because we run, me, Elijah, and, and, and the folks I know in this training industry, we run into so many folks who they tell themselves no before they tell themselves yeah. They talk themselves out of stuff they could do. They talk themselves out of being better. They talk themselves out of telling themselves they can't lose weight. They, they can't run a mile. They can't run half a mile. They can't run a mile. They can't run a, a 3K, 5K. Uh, they can't run a, a half a marathon or a marathon. They talk themselves out of it before they even give effort. And the, and the, the main part, the main thing is you just got to try. If you alive, if you are alive, you breathing, you got to try. And you got to keep trying and you got to keep trying and you got to keep trying. You got to be in your you got to be in your in your head mentally that you're going to try to beat this shit. You're going to try to win. Because once you give that up of the idea that you cannot try, you cannot win, you're not going to even 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 mentally consider that you can you can get through this. It's it's like your spirit is dead. Your spirit is dead and it's contagious to the people around you and those are kind of individuals they are hard to coach train you you may even have those kind of individuals in your family you know you, you you tell them that you want to open this business or you want to try try something you want to jump and just just you know take a leap of faith and they're telling you all the they're, they're feeding you a bunch of negativity and telling you all the ways that something can't get done. This happens between husband and wives, wives and husbands. It happens between siblings. And, and, and most important and even real disappointing is when you have a parent that tells a child what they can't or cannot do or what they can't do. You know, just just stymie, just stymieing, stymieing and, and shutting down mentally, mentally the confidence you can build in yourself just on the strength of you know what anything's possible i think i can do this even if i may go through some discomfort and some pain uh, i'm gonna go up to that wall and try to knock it down and in, ta in talking with the young brother yesterday you know as we i was telling him all he just asked me a bunch of questions about training and getting in shape and, and exactly what he wanted to do and after me telling me a long conversation for a good hour or two hours, after after going through that conversation, it just something just hit me. I said, you know what? Just start training. Just start coming in here, push, pull, split, uh, two or three, four exercises to a body part. Don't forget your legs. Start eating good and drink water. Do your research. Do your reading. But first. Come in here, train hard, get your volume in, keep the intensity up, eat good, drink water, and then go from there. And as you as you're as you're training your body, knowing your body, know what works, simple things from knowing doing a regular curl does nothing for you, but doing a reverse curl, your arms feel it more. Doing a tricep press on a cable press down versus doing uh, skull crushers, you get more from skull crushers. Uh, squatting on a Smith machine, where where the Smith machine give you some stabilization, and you bringing your knees in closer, you're working your quads a lot better versus hopping on a roll rack and just doing free squat. Get that stuff over time, but in the beginning, just jump in there with the intensity, jump in there with the volume, do the traditional lifts learn what your body does and doesn't do get that mind muscle connection and then worry about all this other stuff that's out in the universe you know information is great the internet is great having all this stuff in google and google searching and youtube is great but then sometimes you got to keep it simple 
keep it simple. Come back to the basics. For me, the basics is the Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. I have the first edition. Just about everything I do from a foundation point starts there. Then it gets into push-ups and dips and dips off of uh, dips, dip bars and TRX and doing the rings and, and, and landmine, landmine barbell rows versus just grabbing the barbell or doing dumbbell rows. You do it with the landmine. You know, so so it, it, you, you get that foundation first, and then you come with all the fancy stuff as you learn in your body. But keep it simple. Keep it simple. A lot of folks try to get all the knowledge and information, and there's no application. They're not even coming into the gym and training hard. They're not even coming coming into the gym and have high intensity. Then, then, and more importantly, they're not even eating clean, they're not eating right, they're not drinking water. And even on the fifth thing, they're not getting enough rest and recuperation, not recognizing how much sleep plays a, a significant role. So it, 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 I, I, I will start more and more not making it more complicated for folks. We're gonna start making it a lot easier because quite frankly the foundation that I have, the foundation of my brother, Elijah, most of the folks I know who train, it wasn't all this all this stuff that we see out there, which we know everything worked. It was simply going to the gym every day or every other day or four 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 or five times a week, going in there, going hard, <laughs> being sore the next day, what they what we call domes, delayed onset muscle soreness being sore the next day where you couldn't even sit on the toilet or walk and if you had a stick shift car and you did legs your legs were shaking on the stick shift from from trying to roll out of bed and, and your chest is hurting or your dead abs and you sneeze or your cough or you laugh and, and, your, and your abs is hurting that's that's the kind of training you want you want to be doing where <laughs> at least you know you did something and, and if some folks say well you know you, you you're not supposed to feel anything when you've been in the gym or working out, you, you shouldn't be in that much pain or discomfort. You know, I ain't no scientist. I can just tell you that as I'm hitting hitting 57 and the kind of training I've done, I didn't, I didn't get past plateaus or get past certain thresholds till I went past that discomfort zone, till I went past that pain zone, till the intensity was on 1,000, you know, and that's been my experience. That's been the experience of everybody I know. And, and mentally, those are the kind of individuals I've been around that I've trained with, who I know do training. And, you know, we don't, we don't push our clients there unless we know where their mind's at. And very, we have very few clients that go there. We wish all of them would go there because it really starts with the mind where you want to go versus your body. And then you just make your body catch up. But if you're there mentally, if you're there mentally, if you're going there mentally, your body will catch up. It has to catch up. That's that's the that's the theory behind adaptation and and, and and challenging your body and challenging your mind to do more than you can even fathom. Cause most folks got that governor on, like David Goggins said, and they don't go past it. So I just want to drop drop that on y'all. Heels and Kings. Heels and Kings World, the merch store, Heels and Kings uh, We're getting ready to come with Heels and Kings Next Level Training and Coaching. We're getting ready to get the web page up. Uh, we're already doing one on one within the city, but we, we have we have a philosophy and, and a mentality which we call the Heels and Kings mentality, and we got 13 tenets that we break down with that. Uh, it's it's, it's oddly enough, we, we, we see the whole thing with the marath marathon continues with Nipsey Hussle. We see the whole thing with the Mamba mentality, respect to that. But we also got a heroes and kings mentality, and we got 13 tenants. And uh, I'll, I'll pop them on the end of this video. But uh, yeah, heroes and kings, my name is Glenn Andrews. My business partner, Elijah, he's training today. He just put up a... a training video on Instagram. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, but more than anything, go to our page, man, purchase some of that merchandise because we we actually go out and talk to folks for free. Eventually that's gonna be hopefully where we're compensated for that because we just dropping knowledge about health, wellness, and how to be a good person, good man, good father, good husband, all of that. So 
We about that life. Glenn Andrews. I gotta quit frowning. Glenn Andrews. Heroes and Kings. Dot World. Don't make it complicated. Keep it simple. High intensity. Push past that discomfort zone. Because you know what they say. On the other side of that pain, that discomfort, is greatness. Heroes and Kings. Glenn Andrews. Signing out.